Hello and welcome to News Now. I am Fidelia Agoncha. Amidst cheers and boos from various lawmakers, President Muhammad Buhari has presented the 2019 budget. The budget expenditure is estimated at 8.83 trillion naira, and the president says it is based on the economic growth and recovery plan. Oni Adekunle has the rest of the story. The presentation began with a rendition of the national anthem before the president's speech. Before getting into the 2019 budget details, President Muhammad Buhari begins by highlighting some economic achievements in the past year. The last three and a half years have been challenging both at home and abroad. Commodity prices, both oil and non-oil, have been volatile. Global trends be it security, trade, our politics have also been unpredictable. Here in Nigeria, we have to cope with disruptions in oil production and exports, security challenges and devastating floods. Through hard work and by the special grace of God, we have weathered these storms and made progress on many fronts, which is why we have cause to be optimistic about the future. The economy has recovered from recession. The president is, however, interrupted by lawmakers who cheer and jeer across party lines. The jeers anger the president, who expresses his displeasure at the conduct of the lawmakers. May I appeal to the honorable members that the world is watching us and we are supposed we Lie. are supposed no, it's not true. we are supposed to be above this. The president then goes on to explain the performance of the 2018 budget. In 2018, average oil production up to end of the third quarter was 1.95 million barrels per day as against the estimated 2.3 million barrels per day for the entire year. However, average market price of money light crude oil was higher, an average of $74 per barrel as at October than the benchmark price of $15 in the budget. As at the end of the third quarter, Federal government actual aggregate revenue was 2.84 trillion naira, which is 40 percent higher than 217 revenue. The overall revenue performance is only 53 percent of the target in the 2018 budget, largely because some of items are yet to be actualized. We have now rolled this revenue item over to 2019. He then goes ahead to focus on the 2019 budget. The 2019 budget proposal is based on the following assumptions. A. Oil price benchmark of $60 per barrel. B. Oil production estimate of 2.3 million barrels per day, including condensates, C, exchange rate of 305 naira per American dollar, for real GDP growth of 3.01 percent and E, inflation rate of 9.98 the president, however, warns that the benchmarks are subject to changes. Notwithstanding the recent softening in international oil prices, the considered view of most reputable analysts is that the downward trend in oil prices in recent months is not necessarily reflective of the outlook 
for 2019. However, as a responsible administration, we will continue to monitor the situation and will respond to any changes in the international oil price outlook for 2019. President Buhari then goes on to present some of the 2019 revenue projection. The total revenue is projected at 6.97 trillion naira, which is 3 percent lower than the 2018 estimate of 7.17 trillion naira, consisting of oil revenue projected at 3.73 trillion naira, while non-oil revenue is estimated at 1.39 trillion naira. Recurrent cost of 4.04 trillion naira, recurrent. B, debt service of 2.14 trillion naira, and C, statutory transfers of about 492.36 billion naira. D, sinking fund of 120 billion naira, which will be used to retire mature and bond to local contractors. He also speaks on the national minimum wage. President Buhari says he will set up a committee to ensure the implementation of a new wage does not affect revenue. Let me say something about minimum wage issue. I am committed to addressing the issue of a minimum wage way, of a minimum wage, and I will be sending a bill to you, the National Assembly, on this. However, in order to avoid a fiscal crisis for the federal government, as well as the state, it is important to devise ways to ensure that its implementation does not lead to an increase in the level of borrowing. I am accordingly setting up a high-powered technical committee to advise on ways of funding an increase in the minimum wage and the attendant wage adjustments without having to resort to additional borrowings. After his speech, Buhari lays the documents before lawmakers who will consider the budget before returning it to the executive. Unyi Adekunle, TV 360 Nigeria. Well, after presenting the budget, President Buhari directed security agencies to find the killers of former Chief of Defense Staff Air Marshal Alex Bade. Bade was gunned down by unknown gunmen um, while returning from his farm along Abuja Kefi Road. In his reaction to the incident, Buhari, in a statement signed by his spokesperson Femi Adeshina, described the murder as sad and very unfortunate. The president also commiserated with the family, friends and colleagues of the deceased, as well as people and government of his home state, Adamawa. Other top government officials, including National Assembly leaders Bukola Saraki and Yakubu Dogara, as well as PDP presidential candidate Atiko Abubakar, also condemned the incident and demanded an improvement to the security situation in the country. And in Lagos, millions of properties have been destroyed and buildings raised down after a huge fire engulfed some parts of the Abulegba area of the state. The fire, which began at about 3 a.m., is believed to have been caused by activities of pipeline vandals in the area. Oyi Adekunle tells us more. This is the aftermath of the pipeline explosion in the Abulegba area of Lagos State, southwest Nigeria. Millions of properties have been destroyed as shops are burnt down, commercial and private vehicles destroyed, and even some residential homes burnt after activities of pipeline vandals caused a huge inferno to spread through the town. It is a horrible experience for one resident who narrates how he escaped. Around one o'clock, my tenant told me, I mean, raise alarm, he says fire, 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 fire. From there, I quickly raised because I sleep in the parlor. So with the knicker that I even wear, then I wake up, I saw the flame of fire. I said, wow. From there, I just started. I, the only thing that even I forget to even pick up my phone, I will on the knicker. From there, I just downstairs. As you know, downstairs now, 
from there. I say, ah, then me from there, my wife told me, say, ah, you know where you close, I wait, there's there, 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 wake up, wake up, wake up, fire, fire. Everybody in the company have already down. So from there now, uh, she picked up my phone. They are going downstairs in order to pick up my two box I rest from my to the express. They, why the flame of this fire? Some residents blame security officials for the inferno. The, the fire itself happened like 1.30 this morning, 1.30, 2 o'clock. We just saw fire everywhere. But we know that it is the bunkery people at it again. As you can see, the um, civil defense are working there. But we know that they did not act alone. We know that they didn't act alone. They don't act alone, no. Because this one has not be English matter. This one has people don't lose their property. People don't lose their lives. That woman where did that place now? If nobody say she dead vigilant and God saved that woman now, she don't, she don't die. What is the responsibility of the security man? The local government, the state, all this so never Nobody can convince me that this um, operation here is not known to the people around there. How many security And uh, let me tell you, about 500, 500 meter distance here, uh, Look at that, um, um, uh, um, what do you call that, uh, palm front. The so-called national security defense or whatever, they, they stationed their vehicle there 24 hours. I think you understand what I'm saying? Purposely to come and monitor the... They want... Can they convince me that they don't know anything going on there? But me, 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 me. Let the security um, op um, operative do the right thing. The residents will surely be counting their losses. It is not the first time the area will be experiencing such a horrible pipeline accident. In 2006, an unverified number of persons were killed after a pipeline explosion also caused by vandalism. Only at TV 360 Nigeria. To Abuja now, the Middle Belt Conscience Guard, a non-governmental organization, has condemned a report released by Amnesty International indicting the Nigerian military for war crimes and abuse of human rights. The group says the report by Amnesty International lacks verifiable evidence and is capable of causing more unrest and security breach in Nigeria, especially in the Northeast. They also say Amnesty International is exhibiting double standard with its continuous unconfirmed report indicting the Nigerian government and the military in the current offensive against terrorists in the Northeast. The Amnesty International report has no connection with improving conditions of human rights in Nigeria. Rather, it appears aimed at, one, creating wrong impressions to isolate Nigeria internationally. Number two, provide negative campaign material for the opposition, whose members are known to have severely been in contact with INEX staffers. Number three, discredit the Nigerian military as capable of securing the country when this same military has performed superlatively in the face of arms, arms safe blockades motivated by Amnesty International. Number four, reignite the farmers' headers clashes after several months of law that is being explored to rebuild trust and relationship by the country. Amnesty International has released a report tagged Harvest of Death, Three Years of Bloody Clashes Between Farmers and Headers in Nigeria, <coughs> which it has been making the round of media organizations to market. The report mirrors the truth with belief that Amnesty International will not have to be running around trying to justify what it has done. Let us state from the onset that we have perused the document in question and there is nothing new in it to justify the hype being generated for it through the intense media marketing. To politics now, 
The All Progressives Congress has dissolved the executive committees in Imo and Ogun states. Also dissolved were the local governments and ward executives in the two states. Their dissolution formed part of the resolutions reached during the National Working Committee meeting presided over by National Chairman Adams Oshomole. In their place, the NWC would inaugurate caretaker committees that would manage the affairs of the party in the two states ahead of the general elections. Our well, news now will continue in just a moment. Stay with us. In the last three years, we have built a multi-purpose centre, which is the envy of all in our constituency. And I can tell you that the people who are living there are already enjoying it. Guy, do you think what this man just said is true? See, I seriously doubt. I'm sure it's one of those that are silly lies. And wait up. Do you know there's a way to find out if these things he's saying is true or not? Ah. This is the construct app. It gives people like us a sure way to track implementation of constituency projects. It gives valid and verified information on location of projects, amounts allocated, amounts funded, the level of job done, and even the profiles of concerned legislators. You and I can post directly on this app. Are you serious? This is the go-to app. If you want to know how our commonwealth is being expended by the government. Wow. Let's even see if what this man said is true. Show me. The Construct app is developed by Other People Nigeria with support from USAID and is available on both Google Play Store and Apple Store. Eh, that is true. <laughs> of course, I told you. Welcome back. Let's now talk business. Aneta Felix is standing by. Hello, Aneta. Hello, Fidelia. So um, the NBS has released a new report on the unemployment figure or the figure of employed and unemployed people in the country. Could you tell us more about this? Well, that's true, as the number of uh, unemployed people in Nigeria has risen to 20.9 million. A new report released by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics shows the number of unemployed Nigerians rose in the third quarter of 2018 from 17.6 million in there was, however, some good news as the economically active or working age population that's between 15 to 64 years of age increased from 111.1 million in the third quarter of 2017 to 115.5 million in the third quarter of 2018. The number of persons in the labor force, and that's the people who are able and willing to work, increased from 75.94 million, while the total number of people in employment increased from 68.4 million to 69.54 million. Nigeria's biggest e-commerce industry, Jumia Nigeria, has recorded a landmark success in the year 2018 in its online service platforms, Jumia Food and Jumia Travel. The online agency has seen uh, increases in its deals and other volume uh, as compared to the last quarter of 2017. The company held a press conference in Lagos to shed more light on those successes and TV360's Adeshawa Udushaga was there and now reports. The saying Christmas came early cannot be overemphasized. But in this case, for Jumia Travel, the online hotel booking service is announcing a record of over 300% growth from the last quarter of 2017. We have grown our flights business immensely, over 300% from the last quarter of 2017. The business has grown exponentially and we've maintained 61 percent best available rates on all major routes so this means that 61 percent of the time major routes flying out of lagos so if you're doing lagos abuja lagos dubai lagos houston um lagos washington lagos london lagos uh, johannesburg you will always find the best rates on Jumia Travel. What have we done with corporate? 50% growth in transactions from the last quarter of 2017. We've hired a robust corporate team that is fully dedicated to our corporate clientele. And we've grown the corporate business to 20% of all the bookings we have in Jumia Travel. With the service that started with just hotel booking, Omolera says Jumia Travel is now expected to expand further in 2019. 
2019, we are introducing value-added services to drive value for our growing clientele. So this is happening two ways. The first on our vendor side, we are giving them more marketing value-added services where they can use Jumia Travel as a marketing channel. So whatever it is they are launching, whatever it is they are trying to push, we would do this for them based on the partnerships we have at a very, very, very reduced cost and reach out to uh, all our customers on their behalf. We continually innovate. We started with just hotels. If anybody remembers when we were just Jovago, all we wanted to do was be the best online hotel booking platform. But then it came to a point it wasn't enough and we started doing the flights. Now we're doing cruises, we're doing visa assistance, we're doing concierge services, and we're doing ground transport. And this means that you don't have to go from one place to the other to sort out your travel needs. Just by sitting in Jumia Travel, you complete everything that you want to do for your travel. The celebration of the festive season usually comes with exchange of gifts from friends and Santa Claus. This time, it will be coming from Jumia Food, its online restaurant's delivery platform. During New Year period, we know that a lot of people want to be at home with their family eating dinner. But for those who, for whatever reason, don't want to cook or go out, we're hoping to be able to give them free delivery. Um, and just another plug for Jumia Party, we're going to be selling drinks on the Jumia Party platform where you can get free gifts like Bluetooth speakers, a hat, a deck of playing cards, etc. So that's what we're doing. Our former open times were up until 10 p.m. and we've extended those open times till 12 a.m. and who knows in the future we might see what other options there are for flexible open times but in the meantime this is something that we're doing because we know that there's customer demand for it. We are also soliciting more restaurants that are open 24 hours and that are open for longer hours so that people have more options than they currently do during those hours. With over 120% of the volume in 2018, Jumia Food explains how it is working to ensure customer accessibility and customer-friendly services. To improve the experience, we wanted to make it easier for you to reach us, right? So sometimes, you know, you can't get through on the phone, uh, the emails are taking long, so we opened up uh, a WhatsApp line. Right, so we think most of the, there's millions, uh, so we've really improved also our social presence. You know, we have Facebook messaging, you can reach us there, you, we have Instagram DMs, we have Twitter, uh, we have a team dedicated to just making sure. So if you can't call us, you can't email us, or we haven't called you, haven't emailed you, you know, we have four or five other medians. And one exciting new feature that we're getting ready to launch is languages, right? So not everybody always speaks English, right? So in the upcoming week, we're launching the Pigeon language. So more people that, you know, can't understand or they're having difficulties. Again, we're trying to make the product as accessible to as many people as we can. We have other languages coming up. By the end of the year, we want to get all the major languages in Nigeria to be on the app, again, which is our big push to be accessible. Um, as the year draws to a close, Jumia will be hoping to finish 2018 on a high and also consolidate its gains. In the new year, Adeshawa, Odushaga TV 360, Nigeria. I will be reviewing the stock market activities for today right, right after this. The Nigerian stock market is facing a volatile session as it fell by 0.35% today and that after appreciating by 0.67% yesterday. The market capitalization also dropped by about 10 million naira to close at 11.215 trillion naira today. And the volume of shares traded today is 200.997 million shares. Uh, the value of shares traded today is uh, 992 million naira less than yesterday. All the deals are, uh, you know, add up to 3,035 uh, shares. And uh, taking a look at our top losers, we see that the oil and gas sector uh, loses by 2.5%. 
99% and is dragged down by Seplat Petroleum Development Company, Total uh, Mobile, and then Dangote Cement. And uh, Seplat actually sold at uh, 555.2 Naira today, and that's the lowest uh, share price they've sold in the past seven trading sessions. And taking a look at our top gainers, we see that uh, Fort, um, Nestle, Forte All, Nigerian Brewers, and Stambik IBTC Bank are making the list. And Forte All is a retainer on the top gainers chart today. They were top yesterday, and so they are today as well. And taking a look at our top traders, we see that the banking sector is dominating. Zenit Bank and Wabco are also retainers on the top traders chart, followed by First Bank of Nigeria Holdings and Guaranteed Trust Bank. Now, they sold a combined volume of over 100 million shares. And going over to our global stocks, we see that stocks in London and in America are dominating as the bulls are actually in the markets. Uh, in America, drug giants Glasgow Smith Klein added to the gains of the Dow, totaling up to a 0.75% increase, and uh, Nikkei actually fell by minus 0.60%. That's it from here, Fidelia. Oh, thank you, Annette. Another day in the red for the Nikkei, and um, thank God FTSE is rising again. But a very volatile market it is for the NSC going up today, going down tomorrow. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed and wait and see how the market will end by the end of the year. Well, still to come is news in the foreign and sports scene after this break. Don't go away. Corruption not in my country. Hey, hey, what do you want to buy? Small baskets. I want plantain. Eh, but why your plantain can't hard like this? Ah, why? madam, eh, now the outside hard. Inside there, eh, it's very soft. Pate, pate. <laughs> madam, wallahi, make her no buy them. Make her show you something. <laughs> what? What's in this one? Madam, this one, now the chemical where they put them for the plantain, make her ripe up. Eh? So you they put chemical for plantain where people go chop. No water, no be chemical. But that... no water. You know, say Pela, I don't talk and say water, I no be enemy. Drink them. We are collecting that water, drink them. Yeah. I just stop, finish. See my belly. I from it don't big. I just stop drink water, finish. Where I just drink water. Where can I drink them now? Wow. I they sell them plantain, I go come put them for chemical because I want to make a ripe coat. Eh, eh. That one I talk and now corruption. Corruption. No be for this casua. Come on, no be for this country. Now me take them. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now. Welcome back. The Syrian Observatory for Human Rights says Islamic State militants have executed nearly 700 prisoners in nearly two months in eastern Syria. The UK-based war monitoring group says the prisoners were among 1,350 civilians and fighters that IS had been holding in territory near the Iraqi border. The jihadists control a shrinking strip of land east of Syria's Euphrates River around the town of Hajin, which U.S.-backed forces entered this month. And more than 100 people have died in clashes between rival ethnic groups in northwestern Democratic Republic of Congo this week. The fighting in Mindombe province is some of the worst to hit the normally peaceful area in years and comes days before Sunday's long-delayed presidential, legislative and provincial elections which many fear could turn violent. The fighting between the Batende and Banunu ethnic group broke out on Sunday over the disputed location of a Banunu chief burial. Meanwhile, the governor of Democratic Republic of Congo's capital, Kinshasa, has ordered a halt to campaign in the city ahead of Sunday's presidential vote for security reasons. The decision by Governor Andre Kimbuta, a member of the ruling coalition, follows crackdown by security forces on opposition supporters last week that killed at least seven people in a fire that destroyed thousands of voting machines. Talking sports now, African champions, the Super Falcons, will face Belgium, Austria and Slovakia in Group C of the 2019 edition of the Cyprus Cup, an invitational tournament. The Super Falcons will use the Cyprus Cup invitational tournament to fine-tune their strategies ahead of the 2019 Women's World Cup in France. The West Africans are drawn against host France, Norway and Korea Republic in Group A of the World Cup. And Manchester United have named former striker Old Gunnar Solskjaer as their caretaker um, boss until the end of the season. After sacking Jose Mourinho, the former Norway striker scored 126 goals in 366 matches 
for United between 2006 and 2007. He became United reserve team coach a decade ago before moving to Norway to manage FC Moda. Well, Mike Phelan, Sir Alex Ferguson's assistant between 2008 and 2013, returns to Old Trafford as Soaks Jar's assistant coach alongside Michael Carrick and Kieran Makina. And that's the size of our bulletin. Do log on to our website at tv360nigeria.com for more news updates and follow us across social media at tv360nigeria. I am Fidelia Aguncha. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.